Hi there, I'm Kathleen Jasper, and today I'm talking about objectives and how to use them effectively in your classroom. It's really important that you communicate objectives with your students and you use them to guide your instruction, and I'm gonna show you how to do that today. Let's get started. Okay, so in a previous video, I talked about lesson planning and how to use the curriculum map in order to guide your own lesson planning. And that the curriculum map is really out there for you to just use. Somebody created this and it has everything you need for lesson planning in your classroom. So if you haven't seen that video, make sure you go back and watch that and I'll link it up here. But I just want you to understand how objectives play out in the classroom. Now, if you're a new teacher, you may not really understand what objectives are. Also, objectives are gonna be all over your teacher certification exams. So this video will not only help you in the classroom, it'll also help you on those subject area certification exams that you're gonna be taking. So let's just take a look at this curriculum map that I've pulled up here. This is for Earth Space Science in middle school, and I'm in quarter one, and I'm gonna be looking at this column right here under students do, okay? so. These are the objectives for this particular portion of the curriculum map. So this is actually quarter one. And in this part, these are the objectives I'm going to focus on with my students. Now you can see I have one, two, three, four, five objectives here. Now this might be a whole week's worth of objectives. And the reason why I say that is because objectives get progressively more complicated or at a higher order thinking or more critically thinking as you go through the lesson. So let's take a look at what that means here. So this first objective is identify interactions on earth. Well, remember, identify is a low level skill. That's at the bottom of the Bloom's taxonomy. You're simply identifying. You're just putting your finger on it. The same here for number two, identify the five earth spheres. And it says hydrosphere, cryosphere, geosphere, biosphere, and atmosphere. That's really a level one question. If I said to a student, what are the five earth spheres? The student could rattle them off fairly quickly, and that's what we call a recall question, all right? Still important, they need that baseline information and that baseline skill in order to move to the more complicated objectives. But right now we're starting off with the low level skills because we're just introducing this lesson. These students don't really know about the Earth spheres yet. So this is where we're going to start. So maybe day one of this lesson, I'm only hitting those two objectives identify interactions on earth, you know, what happens, does it rain and it snows and the wind blows and ice melts and things like that. And then of course the five spheres, which have to do with that, right? And we may just spend the first day or two on those two objectives. As we move through, now we get to differentiate between now we're bumping up a skill, right? We're not just identifying, but we're differentiating, maybe comparing and contrasting and figure out the differences between and among the hydrosphere, cryosphere, geosphere, biosphere, and atmosphere. So you're gonna to need to know the characteristics of those particular spheres, but you're also gonna to need to know what makes the hydrosphere different than the cryosphere. Well, the cryosphere is frozen ice on Earth. And the hydrosphere is all of the water, liquid water. Well, what's the difference there? Well, the cryosphere is the glaciers and the poles, whereas the hydrosphere can be everything from the clouds and the rain and evaporation and lakes and puddles and things like that. So that's where the upper skills come in now. We went from identifying, now we're bumping it up to differentiate. Notice here, under our fourth objective, create a model, create, apply. That's at the top of the Bloom's taxonomy. So notice we started with identify, then we went to differentiate, and now we're up to create. So in this case, they're talking about bottle earth. This is a classic um, science activity where you create a little uh, sphere in a bottle. It's pretty interesting. There's a bunch of YouTube videos that you can check out on that, but it shows how the earth spheres interact. Sometimes it's just collecting water in a bottle and seeing all the different organisms that are in there and, and maybe some like algae and things like that. So it's very interesting, but create a model and that might be drawing the model. It could be creating one out of like something. It all depends on what 
access you have. But creation and application are moving up that pyramid. So now we're getting a little bit higher up in our skills. And then finally, number five, provide evidence to support. This is a very important objective. We wanna be teaching students very early on to use evidence to support what they are saying and what they are learning. So for example, you might say, oh, you know, the hydrosphere is different than the cryosphere because cryosphere is ice and hydrosphere is liquid water. And they might rattle off all of this stuff because they heard you say it and they saw it in a, in a movie. Maybe you showed a little video or something like that. But now we need to say, okay, that is correct. Show me where you found that information. Show me what supports that evidence. Where can you point me to so that that is backed up, so that what you're saying actually has evidence? And this is very, very important in science class, but it's also important in all classes, social science, English language arts, everything, because you wanna provide evidence to the claims that you make in the classroom. Now, these are five objectives here, and you're not gonna go like go through all five of these in one day and then now you're off to the other objectives. These might stay up on your board for a good three, four, five days, but you always wanna make sure that you are referencing these objectives when you're talking to the students. So let's say that these are the first two objectives you're gonna do with students day. You're gonna identify interactions on earth and you're gonna identify the five spheres, hydro, cryo, geo, bio, and atmosphere, okay? So those two objectives are up on your board. You just started this unit, so you're not going for anything more than that. You just want your students to get through those two things and by the end of the lesson, they're gonna have those down. Now, those are your objectives. You wanna make sure you communicate those to students. This is something that'll help you in your teacher evaluations also. When I would come in and observe classrooms, because I was an assistant principal, and I would hear the teacher reference the objective and say, okay guys, our first objective today is to identify interactions on earth. I was super impressed because most teachers just write the objectives on the board because it's like a check, because that's what you're supposed to do. That's the rule. That's what the principal says you're supposed to do. But objectives are there to guide learning. So if I'm communicating this to my students, now my students know what they are responsible for. So you can frame it like this. All right, guys, our first objective today is to identify interactions on Earth. So by the time we're done with this lesson today, you're going to be able to tell me about the interactions on Earth. You're going to be able to identify them and maybe even explain them a little bit to me. The second thing we're going to be doing is identify the five Earth spheres. And you may have heard of these before, or maybe not. And those are the hydrosphere, cryosphere, geosphere, biosphere, and atmosphere, okay? So by the end of class today, we're gonna master these two objectives, okay guys? And they're like, yeah, sure, okay, whatever. So when you start and you go through the lesson, let's say that at some point, you guys identify interactions on Earth, your first objective. A really good strategy to do is then to say, hey, did we identify the interactions on earth? And the kids say, yeah, we did. And maybe you ask some questions. Okay, what does that look like? What does that mean? And you ask very specific high level questions when it comes to that and a kid raises his hand and he tells you, and the student over here tells you, or maybe they did a writing assignment or some sort of cooperative learning to show you that. And then you can say to the students, did we meet this objective today? Did, are we able to identify the interactions on earth? And when the kids say yes and show you, they can't just say yes, they have to show you that they can do it. Then you can put a check mark next to that objective. And not only does that give you a sense of accomplishment as a group and the students feel that they've done something, you've met the objective and the objective now is active. It's not just static on your board so that your principal sees them when she walks into your classroom. The students are actually interacting with the objective. So let's say we move on to the second objective. All right, guys, we've mastered objective one. Let's go to objective two. And that is identify the five earth spheres. And maybe they can do that. Maybe they can um, identify them and all of that. So you say, have we met this objective today? Yes, we have met the objective. Oh, these are the five Earth spheres. And they talk about them and, and all of that. And you say, guys, we met, our, we met our goals today. We met our objectives today. Well done. And now they understand 
the purpose of the lesson and what they're responsible for. And when they meet that objective, not only is it a sense of accomplishment, but it's also moving them towards the standards because the objectives are based on the standards. And now they're moving towards, you know, success on, and I hate to say it, but that standardized test at the end of the year, you're setting your students up for success. These are the main things that the state wants your students to know. And it does you no good just to have them written on the board. What you want to do is have them communicated to students. Now, let's say that was day one. Now that was Monday. Let's go to Tuesday. All right, guys. Now let's, let's revisit these objectives real quick. Let's just go over these one more time. What are the interactions on earth? And they can do that because they did it yesterday. And then maybe we identify the five earth spheres like it says here. Okay. And now we're going to bump it up a level. You guys, our new objective today is to differentiate between and among these spheres. So you're going to tell me similarities and differences and how they interact with one another. And we're going to actually have to use a little bit more of our brain power to do this. The first two objectives yesterday were kind of easy because we were just starting off the unit. Now we're getting into more complicated concepts and you're going to have to dig deep for me today. So let's go over this objective and what you're responsible for. And then you go through it and you talk to them about it. Then you do the lesson and the lesson could be anything. It could be direct instruction with you talking about it. it, could be a demonstration, could be cooperative work, could be individual work, whatever it is. Then maybe you stop and say, hey guys, I think we've met this objective already. Maybe you're only 15 minutes in. Can you guys differentiate between the five earth spheres? Yeah, I can. Somebody raises their hand. All right, tell me about it. And the student says, and then maybe you bump the questioning a little bit. Okay, tell me what that looks like. Or why does that happen? Or how does that happen? When you do that, you bump the questioning up and you really kind of extract that higher order thinking from the students. So that's a really good thing to do in the classroom. And then maybe you have students, you know, complete an assignment or something so you can measure. You can measure this objective. Can students differentiate? Well, maybe they did something and I collected their papers and I can see, yes, they can differentiate. All right, guys, looks like we've met this objective today. We are able to differentiate between and among these spheres. Awesome job today, you guys. All right, so we check that off our list. Then maybe Thursday and Friday now, we're working on creating a model and providing evidence. And I communicate that to students. Guys, these next two objectives are much more difficult than our first few. These next two objectives are really going to require some rigor and some critical thinking on your part. And you kind of talk to them about that. That's that metacognition, getting them to understand that we started down here with the identify. Now we're moving up towards the differentiate creation, application, providing evidence and communicating that with them. And you're stopping periodically throughout the lesson. You're, you know, putting your hand up saying, all right, guys, let's, let's take a break for a minute. Eyes on me. Are we able to provide evidence to support what we're doing here? And somebody might raise their hand and say, I, I don't really know. I, I can't find any evidence. Right? So now, you know, we have not met the objective and that we need to slow down and maybe revisit what's going on, maybe go back over our directions, maybe help the student locate, or maybe have another student share his or her process for locating evidence to support. And these last two objectives might take you another day. And that's okay because they're the higher order and that's where we want them to be. We want them to be at the critical thinking stage, right? So you always want to keep revisiting. Did we meet this, this objective yet? Not yet. Not we didn't meet it totally today. So tomorrow we're going to come back and we're going to revisit this because we have to go, but you're almost there. We've almost met our objective. Let's revisit this tomorrow. And now you have this communication back and forth about the objectives. They become dynamic, they become fluid, and they become a large part of the student learning. And this really helps your students understand what they're responsible for. And it gives them a sense of accomplishment when they've met their learning objective. This is not just for elementary school students. When you are working with middle and high school students, this is very, very, very important for them to take ownership of their learning. These are their objectives. These objectives are not for your principal. 
These objectives are not for you. They are for the students to guide the learning so that students understand what they're responsible for. All right. So that is how you use objectives in the classroom. And don't be afraid to go back to an objective. Sometimes you think they got it. And then the next day you're like, they didn't get it. Obviously something went wrong. I need to go back and reteach. Totally fine. Just pop that objective back up there, communicate it with your students and keep it moving. And you'll be able to help your students learn and grow and you know everything that they need to do in your classroom. All right, so that's objectives today. Hopefully that helps you in your classroom. Definitely communicate those objectives with your students. And if you have your principal come in observing you and he or she sees you do this, guaranteed you're gonna get a check in the exceeds box for that. This is a really, really powerful way to run your classroom. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notifications button so you get notified when we upload new content. And if you have any questions about this video or any video, throw it in the comments below. I'm happy to hear from you. Thank you so much and have an awesome day.